<laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is not exactly the speech at the Capitol I hoped to be giving after the election. But after a few weeks of taking selfies in the woods, I thought it would be a good idea to come out. And I am very grateful to Harry for inviting me to be part of this celebration. As we celebrate a great leader and a great senator, and yes, a great American, I just want to pause for a moment and mark the passing of one of our great Americans as well, uh, Senator John Glenn, a friend to many of us and a genuine American hero, passed away today. And I know the tributes will be flowing I'm sure the congressional record will be filled with pages of appreciation and recognition of this extraordinary American's life. It is fitting that we're here in the Kennedy Caucus Room, which has seen so much history. Harry got his start in politics organizing for JFK. Even then, he knew how to win. My very first experience as an intern here on the Hill was helping with hearings right in this caucus room. And it's fitting that we would gather in a place that represents the values of this extraordinary deliberative body. I want to thank Landra and the entire Reed family for sharing Harry with us all these years. And I'm delighted to be here with Vice President Biden, leaders McConnell and Pelosi, and my former partner from New York, Chuck Schumer, as well as so many other friends and former colleagues. Today we are hanging Harry's portrait here in the Capitol, but the more fitting portrait of him will be the one that goes in the dictionary next to the word fighter. Throughout his career, Harry's fought the good fight on behalf of the working families of Nevada and all Americans. Harry welcomed me as a new senator more than 15 years ago. And over the years, he became both a trusted colleague as well as a friend. One of my favorite memories, Harry, is going with you to Fallon, Nevada. We went to hold a hearing about the high rates of leukemia in that small town. We both shared a passion for health care and a worry about so-called cancer clusters. And on that trip and on many occasions, I saw firsthand Harry's deep commitment to the state and country he loved and served so well. No matter how high he rose here in Washington, he never lost touch with the people and values he grew up with back in Searchlight. In the little house where he was born, there was an embroidered pillowcase with a quote from Franklin Roosevelt that embodied Harry's life and career. We can, we must, we will. I've walked the neighborhoods, sat in union halls, met workers in casino kitchens, and everywhere I went, Nevadans told me how much it meant to them to have Harry Reid as their corner man. We've seen the strength of that bond in election after election. I've benefited from it, and so have many Democrats. Harry's commitment to our country runs just as deep. Throughout his career, he's fought tirelessly to protect America's public lands and natural beauty, from protecting the Great Basin National Park to restoring Lake Tahoe to leading the way on clean energy. Harry's legacy is embodied in landmark legislation that made life better for American families, like the Affordable Care Act, which wouldn't have passed without his leadership and now provides health coverage 
to more than 22 million people. Millions of young people can stay on their parents' health plans because Harry Reid fought for it. And that's not all. Millions of seniors rely on Social Security Day because Harry led the fight to stop it from being privatized. He fought to pass comprehensive immigration reform and got it through the Senate. If it had been signed into law, millions of families would not be living in fear of being torn apart, and our economy would benefit from the millions of workers coming out of the shadows. As a senator, I learned a lot from Harry about how actually to get things done in this place. He's not a man of many words, but when he uses them, he always tells it as he sees it. He's never afraid to speak out, even when it's not easy or popular. Harry has fought for the simple but powerful idea that, yes, we are all created equal. He understood that all our leaders and all of our citizens alike have a responsibility to defend the rights of every single American. After the Constitutional Convention, it's well known, Benjamin Franklin was asked what form of government the new nation would have. A republic, he replied, if you can keep it. Well, that's still our charge, and it's as urgent as it's ever been. We must stand up for our democracy, just as Harry has done his entire career. Let me just mention briefly one thread in particular that should concern all Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and independents alike, especially those who serve in our Congress. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year. It's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk. Lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. It's a danger that must be addressed, and addressed quickly. Bipartisan legislation is making its way through Congress to boost the government's response to foreign propaganda, and Silicon Valley is starting to grapple with the challenge and threat of fake news. It's imperative that leaders in both the private sector and the public sector step up to protect our democracy and innocent lives. Harry Reid and Vice President Biden may be stepping back from the daily scrum of politics and governing, but I know I speak for them as well as tens of millions of Americans when I say that we are all counting on those of you who remain, counting on you to defend this institution that all three of us love so much and the democratic values it embodies, counting on you to carry forward Harry Reid's legacy to stand with working families and fight the good fight for a better, stronger, fairer America. Harry, my friend, thank you for your service and your friendship. I can't help but think of that wonderful song, The Boxer. You left your home and your family when you were no more than a boy. Now in the clearing stands a boxer, a fighter by his trade. You carry the reminders of every glove you faced. But even more, we carry the reminders of every fight you waged for us. And we will never, ever forget. I wish you and your family all the happiness in the world. You have earned it. Thank you, my friend.